Hey there, my name is Erin Deal, and I'm a half Southern, half Midwestern mama, some call this voice a nasal twang, who took $5,000 to build and scale a one of a kind experiential organization that improves the lives of corporate professionals through personal development, humanity, and humor. Along the way, I've built client relationships with some of the most notable companies in the country, all while attracting a rock star team of experts and hilarious facilitators. Sounds pretty awesome, right? Well, what I didn't tell you is that my resume also includes a long list of comedy shows I bombed, improv teams I didn't make, companies who told me no, and many a heartache when it came to becoming a mother. I want to show you the real deal of the grit, creativity, and determination it takes to overcome your disappointments, embrace the suck, and design the career you could only dream about. I believe we all have our own unique gifts that we bring to the world, and it is our mistakes that help to unwrap them. Welcome to Failed It. Hey, Failed It fam, it's Erin here, and today I have a bit of a different episode for you. I wanted to use this opportunity to talk to my Failed It fam out there who has struggled or is currently struggling with public speaking. Now, this episode is coming out the day after the election. I want to preface, this is not a political episode at all. We are not saying anything about politics. However, I am using this opportunity as a way to share with you one of the coolest stories that we have here at Improve It. Jenna McDonald, our client experience manager, started out as an intern for Improve It. This was 2000, I believe, 17. She started working with us. And we loved having her in the office. She loved being there. When her internship ended, she actually asked me, could I stay on? And I thought to myself, well, sure. And this was an internship for college credit at the time. So I said to her, just know, like, this is your thing. We want you here. But if you, whenever you don't want to come, you don't have to come. So she said, no, I love being here. This is the best part of my week. I want to come. So we said, yeah, definitely come. It was a two-day-a-week internship. And then when you get a job, we'll, you know, be a reference for you, all the things. Well, the day came where she asked me to be a reference for her, and I quickly got off the phone, called Allie, our director of ops, and said, Jenna's leaving us. Oh my gosh, we can't let her go. Uh, And we figured out a way to bring her on part-time. That part-time job turned into a full-time job, and she's been with us for the past three-ish plus years. And I don't know what Improve It would be without her. One of the coolest things that I witnessed as a leader was watching her go from a very strong fear of public speaking to crushing it in front of a world leader. So, failed it family. If you are struggling right now with showing up in this virtual space on Zoom, presenting to your team, presenting to clients, If you're struggling showing up on a sales call or just even wanting your voice to be heard or thinking that it could be heard, this episode is for you. I, my voice just shook because I literally get chills when I think about this story. So in 2017, Improve It was asked to be a trainer for the Obama Foundation. And the Obama Foundation was brand new, and they had their first ever training day in Chicago. And we were tasked with training 25 peer mentors to then train a group of about 200 plus peers or citizens on creating positive change in their communities. So we took our team building workshop, we taught the uh, peers, and then we had them help us train the people, so to speak. Jenna actually got to be a citizen or a peer in the audience. And before this day, Jenna was so, so shy when it came to speaking on the phone, 
talking to our clients, presenting anything. I, you know, she just definitely had a fear of it. And I'm going to bring her on the show today to allow her to share her story of how talking to a world leader changed her mindset when it came to public speaking. And my hope is that today's episode will hit home for you in some way, shape, or form, that you will take her tips of what she learned and listen to this experience and put it into motion in your own life. So let's get to failing it, my failed it family. I now introduce you to Jenna McDonald, Improve It's Client Experience Manager. Okay, Jenna, welcome to Failed It. Thank you. I'm so excited to be here. Oh, it's the long time coming, sister. So <laughs> I know our Failed It fam would benefit so much from hearing your story in your own words of what happened on the first ever training day with the Obama Foundation and then how you ended up meeting former President Barack Obama. Yeah. So it was three years ago this month, actually. And it was 2017. And I remember Improve It was brought in to facilitate training for the foundation's um, kind of pilot program of training in Chicago. And basically, this program was designed to bring together a group of young Chicagoans who had a passion for civic engagement and social justice. And I fell into the peer age range So I got to attend as a participant, as well as you and Christy attending to lead us through some training. So after a full day of training and workshops in small groups, we were assigned to kind of choose individually an issue in our community that we wanted to solve. And so we came up with these storyboards. And I remember I talked about fostering um, a diverse talent pipeline and kind of getting career development opportunities for high school students before they even step foot into college. And so I mapped out my storyboard and my issue. And there was a photographer coming around taking pictures of these storyboards. And I didn't think anything of it. And then flash forward to kind of the end of the day, where we're kind of wrapping up and the staff person kind of comes on stage and says that they have a special guest and out walks. Barack Obama. And I'm actually kind of getting chills just thinking about that moment. Um, I remember there were about 200 of us and we all kind of went wild. And I think that I jumped while also crying. <laughs> <laughs> That's accurate because I watched it happen. That is accurate. <laughs> oh, yeah, because you knew. But yeah, you knew that he was there, but we didn't. Uh, so then he announced, he went through this really lovely speech and he announced that he was going to talk with some of us about our issues and our storyboards. And that's when I, I vividly remember kind of freezing and looking at my team lead at the small table I was at and realizing putting two and two together. And that's why the photographer was there. And it was so quick from that realization. I was just pulled up. I don't even know if my legs worked. I think I was like pulled up by staff members (laughs) to stand in line behind a couple of people who were going to talk about their storyboard. And I was so nervous like my palms were sweaty my mind was racing and I looked back and you and Christy are like grinning and also your faces are still in shock it's kind of where the day has led us and I'm brought up finally to the microphone to speak and I truly cannot tell it was about 10 minutes or so I know you recorded it I have not rewatched that recording I, I cannot bring myself to do that And I honestly think I blacked out in that moment. I remember little pieces of it, but I think just the unbelievability, that's not a word, but of that moment, I kind of just blacked out. And I do remember the last thing I kind of said to myself before finally stepping up to the mic was just to fake being confident. Like there's, if there was ever a time to just fake being confident, it's right now. And um, I just remember Barack Obama knew my hometown because I'm from the Chicagoland area. So he bonded over McHenry. I even got to kind of laugh. I got him to laugh at something I said. You did. And that's kind of all that I remember from that moment uh, before kind of being whisked away to talk to 
a bunch of news stations. So it was really <laughs> one of the most, <laughs> it was one of the most unbelievable moments of my life and getting to meet someone that I admire so much. And I remember I was still living at my mom's because this was right after graduation. So I remember taking the Metro home and not listening to any music, not looking at my phone, just sitting in silence, thinking that that day was not real. And oh just feeling God. so strange going back to normal life after that had just happened. Oh my, Jenna, I remember you and I texting the next day and yeah. you were like, is this, am I alive? Am I dreaming? Where am I? Oh, okay. That story still gives me chills every time. It's literally one of my favorite moments. And I, everything you said, it's funny, your recollection and then mine. So I want to, I want to just touch on a few things you said and from my memory, because it's so funny. So I, like you said, I knew you were going to meet him. I knew he was there because we had done our keynote and then they took all the facilitators backstage and they said they wanted a group photo and we're like, okay. And then in he walks and it was Christy and I, and you were still with the 200 participants and Christy and I were in the back with the other facilitators and we just started bawling and crying and got to shake his hand. And then we found out that he was going to go surprise all 200 uh, peers and citizens. And I had no idea at that time that you had been chosen by your group to lead your project. So I was like, Jenna's going to freak out. This is amazing. I just remember watching you jump up and down and literally <laughs> like a little kid at Christmas. Like you were like jumping up and down, squealing. Christy and I were just like sitting back watching. And then I didn't know you'd been chosen. And when we found that out, I literally was like Amy Poehler and Mean Girls. I took my phone and I just sat there with the press recording you. And I just kept remembering in that moment, I'm watching her life change before my eyes. Like, And Christy and I both looked at each other and we just knew your life was changing and you were changing as a person. And I, I remember saying to you after that, I mean... And and this is a big lesson, I think, for the failed it fam. Literally nothing could be scarier. So you've already yeah. done the <laughs> you've already done the scariest thing. And the way that you banter back and forth with him was so wonderful. I remember coming up to you after it was all over and just all of us being in shock. And then it was as if you were a celebrity on the red carpet. Everyone was like, Give me Jenna, give me Jenna, give me Jenna. So it was just the coolest thing ever to watch and to witness and truly one of my proudest moments in and being a leader of Improve It and building this company. It's one of my favorite stories and maybe the favorite story to date. It's just so good. Hey, Failed It fam. Want to hang out more? What's that you for? Okay. <laughs> Did I jump in too soon? Sorry about that. I mean, okay, now my cheeks are pink. Oh, okay, what I'm saying is, I like you. And if you like me, then let's talk more than just once a week. How about like daily or whenever you feel like opening that app? The app? Yeah, that app. IG, the gram. Instagram. So on my Instagram handle, at Keeping It Real Deal, I give you a behind the scenes look at how episodes are made and every week we do IG Lives with guests from the show. You can also follow at Learn to Improve It. That's Learn T-O Improve It for soft school training tips and tricks for you and your team on things like vision setting, taking creative risks, virtual communication tips, and more. Now, you can DM me directly on either of those handles to ask cues and to tell me what you want more of from this show. I literally read every single one and it's where I hang out. So let's hang y'all. So give at keeping it real deal and at learn to improve to follow on the gram and give me a big fail. Yeah. And the DMS when you do, I am so excited to hang and hear from you. So let me ask you this. I did tell our failed at fam that you had a fear of public speaking mm -hmm. prior to this. So you mentioned confidence, telling yourself to be confident if there's ever a time. But if somebody, if somebody in the failed at family 
is listening this to this today and they they're like, how in the world did she do that? Dig me a grave. I would rather be dead. What would you say are the five tips that you would tell them to overcome their fear of public speaking? Yeah. And I, I want to be clear too, that I still get nervous for public speaking and for presentations and for events, but it's not that kind of debilitating stage fright that I had in this in this moment or before this moment. It's more of a healthy, nervous excitement. And so I think that it's it's not one and done with any of these tips, but these five tips have helped me to kind of overcome that stage fright that I was feeling in all of these moments. So I think the first one that is so important, and you hear this a lot, but I don't know how many people, myself included, actually did this to improve. So actually doing this helps a lot. Uh, the first one I would say is to practice to a fake audience. So get a friend, get a roommate, lock eyes with your pet, whoever is around, put eyes on a plant, just practice public speaking in front of something else. <laughs> to kind of prepare your mind to speak in front of another living, breathing thing to set you up in the right environment. That's the first one. I love that. I could literally see you doing that because for everybody <laughs> listening, Jenna loves plants, succulents to be exact. I imagine a succulent in your apartment with eyeballs, those little googly mm. eyeballs. That's what I just pictured. I might need to do that. <laughs> yeah. So what you're saying though is the play pretend. That's what you're saying. Let's play pretend almost like we do an improv, it's really play pretend and imagine that you're doing the thing that you're afraid to do. Exactly. Exactly. It's setting up that environment that feels real, even though it's not in that moment. Love it. What's number two? Okay. So number two is this phrase that one of my friends told me in college that I think about all daily now, action cures fear. So I kind of keep that quote in mind and in the context of public speaking, find opportunities to practice and fake confidence if I don't have it. So I try to volunteer for public speaking projects. I try to, I'm terrified. I do it anyway and I fail at them. And then I kind of rinse and repeat that process. Yeah. So you take action or you act on it, which I love so much. And you have to, it's true though. You have witnessing this since this opportunity happened three years ago, you have spoke to numerous of our clients, our, our potential clients. You lead what we call improvise and shines. You lead round table discussions. You're just totally different in your confidence level than you were three years ago. So you really put that into motion, which I love. Love, love. Okay, what's number three? Number three is kind of putting on my favorite outfit. And right now, I can't be brought to wear actual, <laughs> real, like, work pants. But jeans are kind of the fanciest I get when I'm talking <laughs> in a presentation. But uh, putting on my favorite outfit, it's simple but effective. And it's kind of that idea of dress well, test well. Ooh. Feel more confident in what you're wearing. I love it. So it's like almost like dressing the part, like you're creating a character, dressing the part of that character, almost as if you're stepping, in, it's like Beyonce, Sasha Fierce. Like you're stepping into mm. Sasha Fierce when you put on those clothes. I love that. <laughs> I love it too. I love it. Okay, give me number four. These are great. Yeah, as you know, I'm an introvert and I like feel like public speaking is kind of a different language or I felt like it was a different language. but. With practice, I kind of realized that what I have to say matters. So I reframed, I mentioned that anxiety, that debilitating anxiety, kind of reframed that into excitement. So mentally shifting into the idea of I'm looking forward to giving this speech. I'm looking forward to having this conversation, as well as getting into the perspective that other people want to hear what I'm about to say, and it might inform them on something. Mm -hmm. Again, you're getting into that character. I love it. You're, you've are you dressed the part of the character. Then it's like you're owning that character. I now imagine Beyonce rising from like at the Super Bowl when she like rose to the stage from the bottom of the stage. They had a little riser and then boom, here she is. Lights on. That's what I, I don't know why I'm going Beyonce here, but I just. I'm not mad about it. Feels it. Like. All right. All right. Give me number five. <laughs> Give me number five. Yeah. And then the fifth one is, I think the hardest one to come, 
come to terms with, but one that has been really impactful for me is kind of embracing my own presentation style. So I've been told, and I think I've been told by you that my presentation style and what you've seen me present is more approachable and conversational. And I think that's great because that's how I kind of present myself in my daily life. So I try to feed into that energy when I'm presenting to feel more true to myself uh, when I'm doing something like presenting that doesn't come as naturally to me. Mm, I love it. And truly, that is correct. I feel like, you know, it's it's such a... What I love about Improve It is that everybody has their own presentation style. We could be delivering the same message, but the way that it's presented feels completely different based on the person. And it's all great energy. Your energy is just so conversational and it's easy to follow. And you're like, yeah, I want to hang out with Jenna when you present. So... That's right. I think it's believing in you. So I'm I'm looking back at your five things, which remind me of almost the same traits of an improv show or getting into character for some type of improv thing that we're about to do um, is number one, you said play pretend. So pretend, get that fake audience, get a succulent with eyeballs. Number two, act. So put what you're afraid of into action, which I really love that. And then you said number three, dress the part, which I think is so important. And if it's jeans right now, that's amazing. Good for you. Haven't worn them since March of 2020. (laughs) And then number four, getting into character, which I really like. I really, that Beyonce analogy stuck out to me, but really it's reframing your anxiety into excitement is what you said. And I love that. And then number five is really just believing in yourself and that being you, which I think is important, bringing your own piece of character to the performance, if you will. But it's really being authentic, I think, is a lot of what I'm hearing here. And then being okay with failure. And I think for you, this opportunity to speak to a world leader, to step outside of your comfort zone in front of 200 plus people. It was scary enough, but you almost didn't even have time to think. You just had to go and do it. Um, And I think what I witnessed that day was you being your authentic self, talking about McHenry, where you're from, got Obama to talk about McHenry, and then just really showing who you are through your presentation. And, and you are proud of what you had to offer. And I think everybody really liked what you had to say. And that came through with the people who wanted to talk to you after, with your team rooting you on, with everybody just really being inspired by your presentation. So what would you say was the biggest lesson that you learned when speaking with a world leader? If somebody listening today is, okay, here is what she learned, what would you say it is? Oh, that's a big question. Uh, I think it goes back to what you said earlier about how after we talked, after I talked with Barack Obama, we talked internally as a team and you said, you can never be scared for a presentation again because nothing will ever be as terrifying or as high stakes probably in my life as that moment. So I think I learned that there's really no reason to put myself in a box. I, like I said, I am an introvert. I prefer smaller crowds to large ones and I'm a type A personality. I like to be prepared for things. And like you just said, speaking with Barack Obama was not a planned presentation. I didn't know he was going to be there and it was not a small affair, but it really was one of my favorite days ever because I think I proved to myself that I can and I have done a lot more than I ever give myself credit for. So it was that moment to kind of feel free in knowing that I can, I can go into any presentation now because I will, I will not be as terrified as I was in that moment knowing I was going to be speaking with someone that I look up to so much. I love it. It was truly a blessing to witness it. I feel honored that I got that opportunity and I'm just so grateful for that day and for what it's done for your life. So thanks for sharing your story with us, Jenna. Thank you, Erin. I really enjoyed kind of reliving it. It made me remember that one of my friend's dads after that day texted her and asked, 
did I just see Jenna on the news? Because all those news stations really did pull me away. And like I said, I don't remember those conversations either. The day is a blur. (laughs) It was magical. It was truly magical. And I'm so happy you relived it with us. And I hope anybody listening takes away some really good juicy chicken nuggets of wisdom. And if they have any fear when it comes to public speaking, they hear your story and it helps improve their own journey with public speaking. So thank you, Jenna. We adore you. Thank you, Erin. I would not have been able to go if not for Improve It. That's for sure. Man, what a journey. What a journey. Wow. Failed at family. Oh, friends. That story gets me every single time. And I hope listening to it impacted your day in some way, shape, or form. So take what Jenna has given us, these wonderful gifts and lessons learned, and apply them to your life in any way that makes sense. Gosh, we are rooting for you here every single day. We believe in you. We know you can do it and you can improve your it, whatever your it may be. So friends of the Failed It family and Failed It family, if you like today's show, please go to iTunes and leave us a review. We truly read every single one and it helps to bring more people to the Failed It family. On top of that, we want to hear from you. So if there's a show topic or anything that you want to know more about, send me a DM on Instagram at keeping it real deal. That's D-I-E-H-L. Or you can do it to at learn to improve it. That's T-O improve it. You can also send an email at info at learn to improve it.com. We read every single message, every single episode that you want to hear, we put into motion. So please shoot us a line. And thanks so much for listening to today's episode. Keep failing it, fail it, fam. We are proud of you and fail. Yeah. Hey friends, thanks for tuning in to Failed It. I'm so happy you were along for the ride. And if you enjoyed today's show, head on over to iTunes to rate and subscribe so you never miss an episode. New episodes drop every Wednesday. I'll see you next week, but want to leave you with this thought. What will you fail at today? And how will that help your future successful self? Think about it. I'm proud of you and you are totally failing it. See you next time. 